another victory, another fun film breakdown. Lots to talk about in this one, so let's jump into it. What is up, Finn fans? Love doing these film breakdowns after a victory. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Defense, you know, held the raw. There was little mishaps here and there. I'll talk about some of the third and longs they gave up. Tua had a had a really good game. Again, he missed some passes. We'll talk about those. But he also made some ridiculous passes. And we're going to talk about those. Um, run game. I'm going to talk about the offensive line. There was one play with Austin Jackson. Gave up a sack. Sorry, my eyes itchy. Uh, and some you know, it, it's here and there. But overall, most of this film breakdown is going to be positives. But if I see negatives, I'm going to point it out. I understand we won. I understand we won uh, 20 to 9. I understand that. But if I see something, I'm, I'm going to address it. Plain and simple. Take it. Take it. Take it and leave it. Take it as it is. Whatever. Well, let's jump with this. I'm going to minimize myself. And we're going to break this down. So this is going to be a first down run. Same drive. He eventually converts the uh, down from that previous incompletion. But same drive. This is first down. It's going to be a run with Miles Gaskin. And this right here is my knock on Miles Gaskin. Again, I think Miles Gaskin can be a complimentary running back. I think he could be like that Darren Sproles type where, you know, they have McCoy and you have Darren Sproles, a nice one two punch. Um, but here it shows what, what Philip Lindsay did last week of him just planting his foot and going, especially on outside runs. Here, you're going to see Miles Gaskin. He's going to dance a little bit before he decides to hit it to the outside. And that little dance uh, gives the defender enough time to get off of his block and make the tackle. So it's going to be a run to this side. Uh, he's going to hand it off. It's going to be an it's. I think he's supposed to hit here, but then he decides to bounce to the outside. But he dances. And uh, that that dance right there kind of gave it up. If he just runs it, if he just plants and goes, I'll show you when, right? He's probably wanting to hit this lane right here. That's what he's seeing. So that's why he does that little dance move. If he doesn't do that little dance move, and I'll show you from another angle. If he doesn't do that dance move, and if he just goes, I think he gets that run. So see how he does a little dance move here, but you see this lane here, this open lane here. That's what he tries to get to, but he gets tackled from behind. If he doesn't if he doesn't do that dance and he just goes it's a first down possibly more because here's the first down marker at the 46 you'll see here you know robert hunt pulls great block here you see i i, I don't think i can hit that at this point i don't think i can hit that plant your foot get to the outside because this defender is trying to hit this inside gap hunt they got a double block on him you got a great block over here you got nobody over on this whole side. So at this point, you need to decide, I'm going to plant my foot, and I'm going to take it to the outside, I'm going to go. But he thinks inside, outside, I don't know what to do, and then gets tackled. Uh, see? Uh, gets tackled. Versus just plant your foot and hit it to the outside. There's no one over there, and go. He has the speed. He has the speed to do it. So this is another incompletion here, uh, and it should be a penalty. So here's Waddle. The play's going to be going to waddle two has time in the pocket i'll talk about that you got patrick laird back there helping with the pass blocking i think this is this is third down um and you're gonna have a deep in from here you're gonna have kind of a post route here you're gonna have an out here and i think you're gonna have a go here so they're all going past the first down marker thank the lord in heaven and i think you have a block and go from uh uh patrick laird Big wide receiver combinations. Looks like the you know you got the two high safety. Kind of looks like a little bit of a cover two here, um, but this is the important one, the in. And you'll see that Waddle gets grabbed, and it kind of throws off his route because Tua does have time in the pocket. So watch right here, ready, right there, right there, Pet, right there. Throw the flag five yards, first down. Because Tua has time in the pocket. At this point, no one's really open. He could throw it out here, uh, and that's what he's looking at. He goes through his reads. He has enough time to go through his reads, and he knows that Waddle's trying to run it here. That's the intended route, is a post route. He's trying to run it there, tried to get it to him, overthrew, almost an interception. Um, 
but definitely 100 percent right there and who was is that number is that bradbury is that the guy who's talking oh it is but he only throws two yards to the left you could do that oh but apparently you couldn't because you had to hold on waddle good thing you didn't get the penalty but again clean pocket tried to get it to him over through we'll look at it from the other angle um but he, he goes through his reads. You'll see. Tua has enough time to go through his reads. He's going to have the motion. Patrick Laird helping, right? Looking over here. Here's your grab. Should be a penalty right here. He's looking over here. I think this is at uh, Kiziki. Comes back and he sees. So essentially, he was supposed to go up. See, I'll draw for you. He was supposed to go up and in. And what happened was he got held. So he went up in up in because he had to spin around so two lets it rip again grabbing on him and incomplete should have been a penalty plain and simple but again two just throws to the left for two yards and 24 can do that remember that because we're going to keep talking about 24 because two picks on him all game and lo and behold, here's your interception. Again, it's another zone concept. You're going to have Xavier and Howard here follow the receiver. Receiver's just going to be running uh, a go route, but Xavier and Howard's going to follow him. Uh, and then you're going to have the underneath zones. Then here's the first down marker. It's first down, first and 10 from our 47-yard line. Underneath zones, and you're going to have three high zones. So they're playing very safe at this point in the game. Same drive very safe and it just so happens that mike glennon aka the draft doesn't know how to read our defense because you see here right boom at this point it's zone you have him playing this zone him playing this zone him playing this zone so his job's him and then you know we'll allow the underneath because a lot of what we're doing is attack defense so you, you throw to saquon barkley here they're going to run up and make the tackle throw it here to the tight end they're going to run up and make the tackle you also have Jane Ginkle here and you have Byron over here playing these three deep zones. Lo and behold, he starts running deep. Glennon throws it, thinking, I can put the you know put the ball where it needs to. You have two men covering your receiver. You have Javon Holland and you have Xavier Howard, who has the makeup speed to jump up and not moss one receiver, but also moss his own guy to get the interception. So, bad decision by Mike Glennon to think he can throw it double covered at this point to him it was a glorified uh you know punt but it was first down and now the dolphins take the ball over at the three yard line well, this is now third down again after the interception and it's going to be a, end up in a sack unfortunately i think they only send four and we get a ton of pressure on us uh, i'll show you at the point where Tua should have thrown the ball and you'll see that not a lot of people were open at the time so you drop back to pass Standing in his own end zone. So his thought process is, don't get a safety. He wants to throw it here. So he's trying to move up. Again, he's a lefty. And we'll look at it from the other angle. But he's a lefty. You have to also count in. He's not going to go and throw the ball wherever it needs to go. He needs to throw the ball. And you have 95 already on his left side. So he'd like to throw it here, but the defender's jumping up. So he's going to like to throw it here. And he's trying to move to give himself more time to get the ball out can't sack so he had somebody open in Gaziki because I think the other defender was covering the other guy and uh, Wilson right so he's looking over here this is his first read comes over sees the pressure coming up in his face at 94 potentially throw it here you got 20 who can jump on that and then you have Gaziki trying to move out of the pocket to get to Gaziki and just can't do anything takes the sack um could he have made it to Gaziki? Possibly. But in that instance, don't try to make the throw and get sack fumbled or have the defenders smack the ball out of your hand and give them a free touchdown here. So I'm not upset with him, with that sack there uh, because of that. You know, he tried to get out, give himself more time to potentially get the ball to Gaziki or to Wilson. Couldn't. He just took the sack. Because if he tries to make that throw and he gets the ball smacked out of his hands, it's a potential seven points for them. Smart decision. After that punt, they started on the Dolphins' 37, uh, converted about one f first down. 
Uh, they're now sitting at third down on the Dolphins' 21-yard line. And this is what I wanted to see more often from them on third down, right? Here you got that zero blitz again uh, consistently. And I noticed this. You, you see Glennon clapping his hands real quick. They kept taking their play clock down to like two or three seconds. And I one of them actually ended up in a delay of game. Uh, but we send the zero blitz at him, and it's at the perfect point. Hopefully we were thinking to get him a, get a sack, push him back more. But it's a perfect point here where Javon Holland's going to get in, pressure him to not allow him to make the throw he wants to make. Because he takes that hit, he overthrows 83. Because if not, he had 83 open. Might not have been a first down, but I got him closer. But that pressure, I want to see that more on third down. So like I showed you on the other third down, I think it was third and 11, they were playing soft. Soft zones deep in front of the first down marker, but they allowed a guy to get open. More of that during third downs. More aggression. Play your man-to-man. Because these quarterbacks aren't going to have forever to throw the ball. Get after them. So, again, they start on the Dolphins 37. Hold them to a field goal here. Down 3 nothing. So, this is the Albert Wilson end around. And I don't know what it is with Albert Wilson and trying to do too much, but also shooting himself in the foot. Because if you, if you were watching the live stream, I got I got mad at this point because he runs into the defender. And we've seen him, like the first down marker's there, he'll run backwards to try to get more. And he did it again here. So you'll see in the end around. And I picked this angle so you could see it better, right? They're going to give it to Albert Wilson. So you see this, right? And you see all of this real estate. Plant your foot and go around, Right? Regardless if he gets there, regardless if he gets here, go that way. Just go that way. You got blockers in front of you. There's no point in going this way because this guy already looks like he's disengaging from his block. Go that way. And I'll, let's see if I can pause it at the point. All right, right here. Go this way. Look at all this room. He plants his foot and runs into the defender. Drove me nuts. Absolutely drove me nuts. Play in real time. What was what was your thought process? I don't understand why he planted his foot. Are you worried about him? So you went back into the defender? It's plays like that that I'm like, what are you doing, man? So if you remember before I was talking about Miles Gaskin, how he stutter-stepped a little bit. He didn't know if he wanted to hit that inside partial lane or bounce it to the outside. Savan so Ahmed here shows what he should have done. So he's going to take it to the outside, right? And this is the lane you want to hit. But he's like, I could. There's. he's about to tackle me. I'm going to bounce it to the outside. Quick decision. Bounces it to the outside, gets the first down. It's about like 12 on the run. Real quick, I just want to show you the difference, right? Instead of trying to do a stutter step to break the guy that's in front of you, he just decides, I'm going to go to the outside. Plants the foot, goes to the outside, picks up like 10 more yards, gets the first down. Again, Miles Gaskin is a good complimentary back, but he dances too much. So this is going to be a first down pass to Devontae Parker. He's going to be running a post route. And you're going to have Gaziki here. He's going to go, be running an out. And then you're going to have Waddle. He's going to come in motion. He's also going to be running an out. And what that does, and Tua does a great job. And this is, they've run this style of play. Sometimes it's just two receivers here. It's one out, one in. But what this style of play does is it forces these guys to come up and leave a huge hole right here for Tua to hit Devontae Parker for the first down. Huge hole. Because these two defenders are seeing Gazicki and Waddle are two top receivers, and we need to focus on them versus dropping back into that coverage. And you'll see that Tua sells it with his eyes as well, forcing these two defenders, again, 24, expecting that two-yard pass to the left while he got burned while we threw it across the middle. So you're going to have Waddle in motion here. See, you already see these two guys coming up, coming up, and he's already moving up. And it leaves, look at this guy. 
he's even pointing that way. He's not coming down to potentially stop him on his crossing route. He's going that way to try to stop this potential screen to Jalen Waddle. Because look at Tua. Tua is not even looking at Parker. Tua is looking at Waddle. Pressure in his face, too. And you could tell he had to stop and go. Rips that ball. First down. And you could see the frustration from 24 because he thought he was going to throw a two-yard pass to the left. Well, it wasn't. Parker came to, to his defense, too. Go check it out on Instagram. So on this play, it's just... I think Tua felt the pressure coming in his face. Uh, pause on that. And <laughs> he didn't have his feet set, unfortunately, because he made the right read and he tried to make the throw. But I think the fact that he didn't have his feet set, he was off on his pass because it's going to be a crossing route here. And he has time. He has enough time and right there. And he sees it and he knows it, right? Because he's going to jump this route. He's covered. He's covered, right? So this is the only route you're going to throw to. And he sees it and he knows it. Just too low. Too low. And he knows it. He's mad at himself. We'll look at it from the other angle. He knows it. Looking over here. Trying to see if Waddle, no, he got 23, could jump that route. Checking out, uh, I think it's Gazicki. Nope, doesn't have that. Looks over, sees Albert Wilson crossing the middle. All right, I got him. And he throws it at the right time. He throws it, but look at his feet. Look at his feet. It's just a bad throw. It happens. It happens. I've seen it happen a ton of great quarterbacks. It's just a bad throw. But he, it's had to do with his feet. He's kind of throwing off his back foot. He makes up for it, though, a thousand times. We just kicked the field. We end up kicking the field goal 3 3 at this point. So, this is why Javon Holland is one of the best draft picks we've had in a very long time. Single high safety, it's just Javon Holland here. He is going to attack this. I think it's the tight end or the receiver, but whoever. He's going to attack this player before. Um, Mike Glennon even decides to throw the ball. Like he reads his mind. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. Right? You got this deep crossing route from 86 here. It's a zone coverage. Not a fan of it, but it's first down, whatever. He's throwing his own coverage. You have uh, Duke Riley here. He's probably going to drop back and cover it. Byron Jones even points it out because he's going to drop back and play safety here. Pointing it out. And he sees it. Mike Glennon sees it. I got 86 wide open. And as look at he's already breaking on it. I'll show you when he breaks on it. 86, come across the middle, boom. Breaking on it. Breaking on this route right here. He's watching, he's looking at his eyes, breaking on the route, boom, punches that ball out. Show you that from the other angle. Just he he just knows when to and he breaks on that route quick. Here's Javon Holland down here. Play action. He's going to drop back. He sees it. Breaking on it. Boom. Punches the ball out. Duke Riley might have been able to grab that. Just such a great pickup by the Dolphins. Second round. Love Javon Holland. This is just an absolute beautiful throw by Tua. He throws the pass before Parker's anywhere near the pass. And he puts it where only Parker can catch it before he's near it. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. It's just, you can't make this up. And this is, people always ask, and I constantly talk about this when I do film breakdowns. I don't see the it factor with Tua. This is the it factor with Tua. This is something you can build off of. This is something that shows you, give the kid time, give the kid a, I'm not even talking an elite offensive line. I'm talking a good offensive line can win us games, win us, win us playoff games. So you got Parker here. He's going to just, you know, run a, a go route, a kind of a little bit, I guess you could call it like a go fade route. If you know, you, you're going to comment that, and I appreciate it. But watch when he throws it. One-on-one. -on -one. You know, single high safety. He is, you know, cheating more to the left side where Parker's going. But he's got one-on-one. -on -one. Throws it now. He's not even looking back for the ball. They're not open. He's kind of breaking. Not 
throws it now because he sees, and this is what, again, pre-snap stuff, which people say that Tua's not great at. Look at the safety. Look at the safety. And he sees that. It's the first thing he looks at. Right? Checking it out. Boom. Dropping back. Looking at the safety. Looking at the safety. Safety's what? 20 yards back? Screw it. I got him one-on-one. And he throws it. He throws a back shoulder pass. And the receiver's nowhere near it when he throws it. Nowhere near it when he throws it. And it's a back shoulder. He's going to throw it here. Not even looking. They're looking at each other, thinking about what they're going to do later tonight. Are they going to go out to the movies? Going to going to go to a nice fancy restaurant? Which one is going to wear the dress? Not even looking for the ball. And he's already thrown it. And look at where he puts the ball. Where the defender can't get it. Only Parker can get it. First down. Look at it from the other angle. And then I'll stop gushing over this play. But it's just... A thing of beauty. Again, watch him stare. Boom. Let's it rip. If he doesn't catch that, no one's going to catch it. Back shoulder. Back shoulder so the receiver can turn, block out the corner, catch the ball. There's one of your thousand it plays that I've seen Tua do over the past two years. So a lot of times when I'm breaking down film, uh, you know, or you know, me, TDE, anyone, reason we break down film... Sometimes we'll notice ah, Tua missed a potential touchdown to Gaziki, or uh, you know he threw it, you know maybe a five or six yarder to get the first down, but he had like in, in these scenarios too where we're on our own, we're on there thirteen. Uh, oh, but he had Gaziki. Here he throws it to Gaziki. Gaziki's going to be kind of running a corner route, and he's going to throw it to him because he has him and he sees it. Oh, I got him. I got him. It's going to be one-on-one. I got him. I'm going to just toss it up for him. And it hits <laughs> off his face mask. <laughs> Again, we get the touchdown on this drive. But he sees him. He trusts him. He throws it to him. And it hits off his face mask. We'll look at it again from this angle because you get to see a little bit more close up. You know, Tua realizes, I, you know, he's got him one-on-one. You throw this. This is the this is the this is the play to throw it. Thirty three tries to get his hand up there. He doesn't. Hits off his face mask. You know for a fact he'd want that one back. Nine times out of ten, he's catching that. Right off, bong. So Waddle comes in motion here, and you're gonna have Waddle run in uh, a you know an out route. And you're gonna have. Uh, Matt Collins running a, a post route or a corner route. And our guy here, Mr. I can do what Tua does, because all he ro- throws is the two yards to the left play, uh, bites on it, bites on Waddle's pass, and leaves Matt Collins butt naked open. Both of these guys are going to bite on this. And you're going to have Parker going across the middle, which causes him to bite on that. Look at this, 24. You're supposed to be back here following Matt Collins. Drops it right to him. Touchdown. What happened there, 24? That's not the first time. Bradbury, I think his name is, saying, oh, two only throws to the left for two yards. That's a little bit more than two yards. Oh, this was right before the half, too. I think the next play, they just run it, and then we Get the ball back after half. Up 10-3. to three. Great play. So here you're going to have another incompletion. Um, you're going to have Parker running and out. You're going to have Waddle running a crossing. And then you're going to have uh, Albert Wilson. He's going to be running another uh, in route. And Tua looks over at Parker first. And then he looks at Waddle. And then he looks at Wilson. And you'll see here at one point, uh, Waddle's open. Right? Boom. So this is his first read. Looking at Devontae Parker. But while he's making his first read, Waddle's butt naked open. Um, But then he gets to a second read, which is Waddle here, and 55 is already covering him. But then he sees Wilson here. 
gets to his third read, again, good blocking by the offensive line. They're sending one, two, three, four, and we're keeping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in to block. I wonder why the offensive line did so well on this blocking. Four on seven. Three receivers out, six defenders on. Like, look at this. <clears throat> but just, I don't, I get a look at from the other angle, just incomplete. And I'm wondering who that's on. Again, seven. Play action here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on five. My apologies. I didn't say that. Seven on five. Ugh. He he like stumbled or something. I don't I didn't see if he, he uh tripped over his feet or something, but that I don't I like that ball placement to let him catch it and keep running. Yeah, you can already see right here he starts stumbling. That's not on Tua. That's on Albert Wilson. You could tell he started stumbling as the ball is in the air. Because that's a great uh, great ball placement to be able to keep the ball and run. Again, Saul Parker, and then by the time he went over to Waddle, he was already covered by that middle linebacker. And then he went over to Wilson, just stumbled, wasn't able to pull it in. So on this play, he tries to get the ball to Gazicki here. I think this is third down. Yeah, it's third down. Right there. Kuziki's going to be running a crossing route here, and he's going to try to get the ball to him. Uh, but unfortunately, he doesn't have time to get the ball to him, and he's going to get sacked here. Oh, he doesn't get sacked. I apologize. He throws it, but it's an incomplete pass. So you'll see here, they send four with the delayed fifth, and that delayed fifth is what's going to get in there. Because, again, I'll let it play, and then I'll talk. Some of you guys say, just let it play, and then talk afterwards. You'll see here, and then he tries to get to him, gets hit, throws it behind him. If we watch it again, by the time the pressure gets to there, right, you know, drop back to pass, looking over here, looking over here, covered, covered. Gazicki's covered here, drop the ball right in here. He sees it. Whoop, I got him. Goes to throw it, gets hit. Look at it from the other angle. Play it full speed, because you can pause and be like, "Let the ball rip." But if you watch it, he he tries when he sees him open. Right, looks, looks, sees him open, tries to get the ball out, throws it behind him. So we got incompletions because of Albert Wilson tripping, and then we got another one because of the pressure in his face on a five uh, five man pressure. Who's supposed to pick up that pressure? Miles Gaskin is supposed to pick up that pressure. And I said this in, in on Twitter that not having Patrick Laird, who's dealing with now, a, I think, an MCL strain, and hopefully we get um, Phil Lindsay back for the Jets game, third downs were huge for these guys who were really good at pass blocking as well as doing other things because this play doesn't happen because of Phil, uh, because of Miles Gaskin. If Miles Gaskin makes this block, he's getting that to uh, Gizicki for the first down and continuing the drive. But he doesn't block anybody. That's on Miles Gaskin on that play. So this is the biggest run of the game for the uh, New York Giants. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the Dolphins have ten men on the field. When Saquon busts this big run on, that eventually leads to another field goal by them. They have ten. Ten guys on the field. You see, they're making a substitution at the beginning of the play. They're making a substitution. And then I think this is Adam Butler realizes, oh crap, I got to get out there. The ball gets snapped. Thank God he's on this side. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're missing a guy. And big run. So that's why they got that big run. Because I was always, I'm like, what? How did that happen? We were down a guy. 
So this is a play where Tula tries to make something out of nothing, and the reason I'm showing you this play is this play would have been more successful if the Miami Dolphins had a running game. Because you're going to see here, there's going to be play action. We're going to have three receivers running out on a route, and all of them are covered. Every single one of them are covered. They only send four. So the Giants only send one, two, three, four. Um, and we're blocking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two is looking over here, double covered. Looking over here, covered. Looking over here, covered. Looking back over here, covered. Screw it, I'm going to take off on my own. We ended up punting. And this is a play where the zone worked because the defender was smart with his coverage. And that smart defender is going to be Alandon Roberts. And again, this is zone, single high safety, but um, Byron and X are going to have deep zone coverages. And then you're going to have the linebackers are going to have the, you know, the third down marker mid zone range. So they're going to, they're going to follow these guys and drop back. But Alandon Roberts here does a beautiful thing. You see that? I might have to show you at the other angle. But if you look real quick, he looks at him. Looks like, I think that's Galladay. Looks over at him real quick, realizes, oh, he's going to throw it to him because he only had two receivers running routes. And he tries to throw it to him. And just, we almost had an Oakland, Ra Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders where he had that pick six. Just, Roberts, you were so close, my man. And I'll show you again. Watch Roberts. Ready? Boom. I have this much room to make up. He's looking. And what he did was he looked at his eyes and then saw who he was looking at and broke on the ball. And just. <laughs> you were so close, my man. Two pick sixes in a season. You were so close. To Mike Gizicki that he drops. And I've watched this a lot. And I still think it was a little high. But I still think that Gizicki should have caught it. So Tua's going to look over here, and he's going to pull down the defenders here. You have Gizicki here. He's running a, a crossing route, a deep crosser. Um, and he should have caught it. You saw Tua look over here, bringing the linebacker down right across the middle, lets it rip. He he technically caught it, but he drops it. Look at it from the other angle. You gotta, I, I don't care. You should have caught it. Um... And I don't think we end up getting any points on this drive. <clears throat> and look when he throws it. He notices that 55 is, is going to come down. So he has to throw it over him. So that's why the pass seems to be a little high. It's because he's trying to, he has to throw it over 55. Play action, sees him. I'm going to put the ball here. I got to throw it over 55. Puts it over him perfectly. You just, you got to catch that. He knows it. Just got to catch that. He's trying to throw it over the defender. You got to make that play. So this is going to be a sack on third and long. Uh, there was a false start that pushed us back. Um, and 100,000 million percent this is on Austin Jackson. And you might not see it in this camera angle. I saw it while I was watching it live, and it infuriated me that Solomon Kinley should be there and Austin Jackson should be right in the pine right now. Uh, but at the time of the sack... Uh, two is going to have no one open, right? Because at this point, you know, you could throw the out here, but again, it's third and long. So he, he throws it here. It's not going to do much from this defender. So he wants those deep passes and just takes, he gets sacked. And by the time he gets sacked, you have your guy that you can get the first down to open. And this is what I'm talking about. Everyone wants the Dolphins to push the ball down the field. Why isn't Tua throwing deep passes? Why isn't Tua throwing it 20 yards down the field? Why is it that it rarely happens? You want to know why it rarely happens? Do you want to know why it rarely happens? I will show you why it rarely happens. Watch Austin Jackson right here. This is third and long. Waddle eventually would have got open. He's blocking nobody, right? Blocking nobody. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? It's like they snuck behind him. Like he's a doofy guard. 
They threw it. They threw a hot dog over here. They threw a hot dog over here. And he's like, oh, I want the hot dog. I'm going to go get that hot dog. You ever see that when like, the, they're like trying to get past the guard and they'll throw something? And he just lets the sack happen. If he picks up that sack, like I showed you, Waddle had enough time. Comes into motion. Right? And there goes the sack. Pressure in his face. If he would have picked that sack up, look at this. Two would have dropped it right here for Waddle. For the first down. Again. It, it doesn't. We don't get any points off this. Because of the offensive line. That's the reason why we don't have those deep passes. Because of the offensive line. All right. So again. It's still uh, 10 to 6. At this point. And the reason why this one breaks my heart. Is Waddle was 10 yards away from. Uh, 100 yards on the game. And at this point. I don't even think he's at 90. I think he's probably at like 70 something. Um. But it breaks my heart because this is a drop that he's going to be running a post. And two of it hits him right in the hands. And when he catches it, he has enough real estate to definitely get the first down, second down. Uh, do we end up in a touchdown? No. We do not end up. No. No, we don't end up in a touchdown on this drive. Uh but it just, it breaks my heart because I wanted him to have another 100-yard receiving day. Throws it to him, butt naked open, hits him in the gut, and look at this. Potential that uh, Bradbury makes the tackle again, but two only throws two yards to the left. Um, but if he catches this, he has plenty of real estate. He'll He's not going to touch down, but he has plenty. Of, and he just drops it. Look at it from the other angle. Just And he knows. He's mad at himself. Play action, boom. See? He knows. No, it's my man. You, we won. So a lot of these little things is, is just it, nitpicking, but I wanted you to get that 100 yards, and he knows it. He knows it. So this is the first of two of Jalen Phillips' sacks. It's going to be back-to-back, -back, so the plays are going to be coinciding. It's first down is going to be a play action here. And you're going to have uh, Giraffe over here. He's going to play action and run over here. Jalen Waddle's fast, my man. He's really fast. So he's going to play action. Waddle's going to respect the play action. But then he realizes, oh, it's play action. I'm going to get that man. <laughs> and uh, he takes the Giraffe down. Just a great play and a great play. This play and the next one I'm going to show you, which is the next sack, are just great plays by the entire defense to give Phillips enough time to respect the run and then get after the quarterback because the coverage. And the next one's a coverage sack. This is a straight-up coverage sack because he waits, right? Covered, covered, covered. And he's waiting for someone to get open. He's looking. He's waiting. And Phillips said, screw this. And he rips and he gets after the quarterback. 100% um, coverage sack. I'm going to look at it from the other angle. I freaking love this summer songs. <laughs> I hope that's his sack celebration from now on. Because he engages with them. And he's looking and he's looking. And then he rips off the engagement. Gets the sack. Two, eight and a half on the air. And then somersaults his way out of here. See you later. Straight up Sonic style. This is going to be the deep pass to uh, Jalen Waddle. And you're going to notice one of... I'm going to show you two things uh, the reason why this play happens. So it's going to be a deep post for Jalen Waddle here. You know, a play action here. It's going to force the defenders to come up because the play before was a nice big run by uh, the running back here. Drop back in the pocket. Boom. Sees Waddle. Has the whole side of the field open. Gets that ball to him. Big play. That This one ends up being a touchdown, giving us a 17-6 lead. But the other thing that I'm going to show you that Again, why don't we throw the ball down the field more often? Well, Tua just threw the ball down the field about 20-something yards. Let's see why. One, two, three, four. How much time did he have? They sent one, two, three, four, five. We kept one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in. I don't want to hear, well, the offensive line gave him four seconds, so the offensive line should get some credit. Not when you're keeping seven in. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's why he got so much time. Just imagine, just imagine what the offense could be if five guys gave the quarterback, and I'm not even going to say two, I'll take two out of the picture, if five guys up front gave the quarterback at least three seconds to throw the ball, and we could do four or five wide receiver sets, how, how much yardage and air and deep passes and explosive plays could happen if the offensive line just the five could give that much time because it ends up being a big play ends up being what i think we're at the 40 down to their 34 5 10 15 20 about 25 26 yards but again, Bradbury, he only throws to the left for two yards. This is the touchdown. And this is a touchdown that makes Bradbury, and I'm going to keep saying his name, you talk about my quarterback, I'm going to come after you, look like a big dumb. I love the play action here. I love Tua kind of hiding the ball. And I love the pass here to um, Isaiah Ford for the touchdown. So you're going to have Gaskin come over. It's going to be a play action. He's going to tuck the ball away, trying to make it really seem like sell it. Tried to bring all of these defenders over because all three of the receivers are going this way. Bradbury here is supposed to be covering Isaiah Ford. Tua, with his eyes, makes him think it's going to be Devontae Parker. I'll look. I'll show you from the other angle because you can see, boom, that precision, that just put the ball where it needs to be for the touchdown to happen. Just a beautiful throw. Look at him come over, skipping and happy and celebrating. This is the perfect angle to show you how he messes with Bradbury. We'll talk about him. Runs over, right? He's looking at Isaiah Ford the whole way. This is his man. Looking at him the whole way. This is his man. Then he looks over at Parker. And by looking over at Parker, forces Bradbury back. <laughs> because he looked at Parker forced him back, forced them both back. This touchdown play happens because of Tua Tungavailoa. Not only because of the throw, but because of his manipulation with his eyes. Looking at Devontae Parker, forcing both 29 and Bradbury back to allow Isaiah Ford to get open a little bit more, and he puts it right where it needs to. Another superpower of his. Another it factor throw right here. This is the third down pass to Devontae Parker. Again, at this point... Uh, we're only up by eight, and we are trying to eat the clock up, but also get down the field, kick the field goal, and just seal the game up. And it's another situation like last time where he throws the pass to Parker. He's throwing it before Parker's even in the situation, and it's another back shoulder throw, and Parker just makes a beautiful catch, getting both feet down. Just absolutely beautiful catch. I'm telling you, if Devonta Parker could have stayed healthy, he would have been a dynamic receiver for us. Just beautiful throw. Back shoulder, gets his feet down. First down, continue eating the clock up, getting in field goal range. And this is the last one I'm going to talk about. Another third down. Uh, again, same drive. And Tua makes this throw with the defender jumping on him. And this isn't just the, oh, uh, he's wide open, let me throw it to him. Look at this throw that Tua makes with the defender jumping on him that Liam Eikenberg allows through. Just drops it in the bucket for the first down. And essentially that seals the game for us. We end up kicking the field goal and needing more clock. But just look at the, look how his body is. Look how he's, he's like torqued. We'll look at it from the other angle so you can see it better. But he makes this touch throw in such a crappy environment. And that is where, again, I got some flack for this. Do that more often. Because you've, you, you've made these throws consistently to show he's got it. But then sometimes you'll miss on him. And I understand no one's perfect. Everyone's going to miss on throws. But sometimes they're at that crucial down where just be consistent. Oh my God, ten, top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Look at this. 51 gets through. Let's it rip with a defender jumping on him and just drops it. Like, you could not ask for a better throw. How many times, how much times does he have? One, two, three, and he lets it rip. And just, he's on him. The defender's on him. Look where he puts that ball. 
the the touch and the accuracy of that pass is just you just can't make that stuff up but yeah that's the film breakdown a lot a lot a lot of good throws from Tua uh few drops by the wide receivers you know bad play by the offensive line it was a, it was a really good game by Tua really good game by the defense a little bit better from the um wide receivers and we need a little bit better from the offensive line but I look forward to consistently making these types of videos. Now, next week's going to be a buy, so there's going to be no film breakdown, but I'll have a different video plan for you guys. I think I'm going to see where the teams are at when it comes to uh, their win-loss from the previous Sunday, and then I'm going to do like a what-we-need-to-happen playoff video for uh, next Wednesday. But other than that, guys, I'll see you tomorrow with the picks video. I'm going to be talking about in the picks video who we should root for to lose and all that stuff. But like usual, guys, stay classy. And fins up.